James Bender is the Director of Development for Buffalo Niagara Waterkeeper and is responsible for the creation of a philanthropic culture in and around the organization to further their efforts of providing clean water for all to enjoy throughout the Niagara River watershed and our Great Lakes. Please welcome James Bender. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to add a joy, and that's me being here today. I really appreciate the invitation. This was uh, wonderful, and I look forward to sharing our mission with you. And um, I hope if you have any questions, you'll um, jump right into the conversation, OK? There we go. <laughs> um, as I said, my, my name is Jim Bender. Uh, I am the Director of Development. so I'm the, lead fundraiser for the organization. Just one of the many community voices of the organization, so no pressure on the fundraising side of this. So just uh, enjoy the show. Maybe, maybe, there we go, point the right direction. Um, Buffalo Niagara Waterkeeper has been around um, going on 35 years. Um, we're actually celebrating next year, so hopefully you'll see some of the excitement from that. Um, and we've been working, it started out as the Buffalo River Keeper. And that was actually Friends of the Buffalo River. And, um, and the goal there was to try to clean up the Buffalo River. 30 years ago, if people remember, nobody wanted to get to the Buffalo River. It, it smelled um, like many of our communities in, um, uh, it, along the industrial uh, belt here on, along the Great Lakes. Rivers could be lit in, and, and burn, and Buffalo was one of those. So what we have done is built a team of experts to help fight that and, and improve our waterway systems, including biologists, planners, landscapers, anything that can affect uh, our water in a positive way. Um, we have a team member that can help with that. What do we do? Again, protect clean water, restore ecosystems health, connect people to water, which is a big key for us, and inspire economic growth and community game engagement. Where do we work? And that's the Niagara River watershed, so, which is pretty big. Um, and you would, including 1,400 um, square miles of watershed, and that touches Lake Erie, the Niagara River, and Lake Ontario, as it all kind of shifts into that. Um, we talk a lot about watersheds. Not everybody knows about what a watershed is. So think of your bathtub, all right? Everything kind of flows to the drain. Everything that flows to the Niagara River, that's our watershed. So it covers a good chunk of all eight counties coming and filtering into the, um, to the Niagara River watershed. As I was saying, Friends of Buffalo River is how we started in 1989. Um, a small group of volunteers held hands to try to fight um, the con continued contamination of the Buffalo River. And um, the Clean Water Act started in 1972, and for a whole decade, really nothing ha uh, happened to improve the river um, until this group came together and started yelling from the, uh, the treetops saying, hey, we got to do something about this. Um, as we continued to grow as an organization, we joined the uh, Waterkeeper Alliance, and that changed us to Buffalo Niagara Riverkeeper because we were still focused much on the Buffalo River. Um, and then a few years back, we went to Buffalo Niagara Waterkeeper because we have expanded to include all the Niagara uh, River watershed. So where does it start? Our headwaters. You guys are in it here in East Aurora. So um, it starts everywhere from the top of our watershed moving down towards the Niagara River. And it's important that we um, maintain our forestry, land conservation, and, and then help our municipalities to protect our water systems. We have a lot of farmlands, our, our agriculture in, in our um, areas, and 
we just want to continue to educate them on trying to do things that are safe for our waters um, as they continue to raise their animals and, and their um, produce. So it's important that we are continue to try to educate our community because it all filters down. We also work on our uh, living shorelines, um, making sure traditionally, historically, people would kind of keep things very clean right up to their water line, cut their grass to the water line, um, cut trees down so they can have a good view of the water, things like that. All those things inhibit our ability to filter and clean our waters as things start flowing. So it's important that we continue to try to leave things natural um, and not try to put hardscape such as walls and things like that in our waterways because it just changes the dynamics of the water. Um, and often um, I'll talk more about uh, Skajakata Creek and how that has um, some of the moves, that decisions made way back when actually probably were, um, there, there are better choices, I should say, not to blame anybody. You know, we do what we do. Um, so we work on water quality, wildlife habitat, um, and figure ways to continue to improve our water system. Water revitalization, this is a big part of the uh, focus uh, uh, of our history in the Buffalo River, for an example, where we cleaned the water, we gave it better access. We have um, a program called Blue Way, um, which is a series of uh, water access points along the Buffalo River and up the Niagara River, um, so people can kayak, fish, um, and have access to water, because what often has happened is those areas were developed mainly by industry in the past, and those things, oh, I keep moving, sorry. <laughs> um, please let me know if you can't hear me. Um, and uh, so with that, uh, thanks, Brandon. Um, so it's important to keep in mind um, giving access to water is a big thing about our um, environmental justice initiatives and, and making sure everybody has access. Got to point the right way. All right, Skajaka Creek, um, everything that we've done for the Buffalo River, we're hoping now to be able to take that to Skajaka Creek. Still need to get a little closer. All right, thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> well, that doesn't help. All right. Um, it, we're hoping to do for Skajaka Creek. There's a lot going on there. Skajaka Creek is 13 miles long, starts in Lancaster, goes through Cheektowaga, where right about the Galleria Mall, it gets put into a tunnel for three miles underneath the east side of Buffalo. Doesn't pop, it pops up at Forest Lawn, all right? It goes out and stays above water through Forest Lawn. As it approaches Hoyt Lake, it gets tunneled again around Hoyt Lake. So Hoyt Lake, which used to be part of the creek, is disconnected. And then it pops up again at the uh, um, History Museum and goes to the Niagara River. There's a lot going on there too. You got the Skajakata Expressway that's built right above the creek, and and, hit, and there's a lot of um, things in the causing water problems there as well. So there's a lot going on. This is our next main feature. We're working with Town of Chictawaga in floodplain um, support we got around there around the Galleria Mall, uh, making sure those flooding systems help the communities that and neighborhoods in those areas that are um, suffering from that but creating more natural floodplains so the water will flow appropriately and, and also capture the, um, the water. One of the biggest problems in our region is that we have a, our sewer and our wa water um, combined and it sometimes overcomes the sewer authority and at which point it overflows into our creeks. And that's a, a big problem. It's a, so we have to figure a way to help mitigate that. And with that process, what we do, by creating floodplains and encouraging the communities to drain their water away from the sewer lines, um, the, the sewer authority can then manage it over time. So it'll drain those floodplains eventually, but they need time to do that. Otherwise, it'll overflow in our creeks. So that's one solution. There's bigger solutions, but a lot more expensive, and that's actually creating two se separate systems. But So that's probably less likely to happen. Any questions on that? I always feel like I'm not explaining that well. Yeah. yeah.
Oh, absolutely. The things like, you know, rain barrels are a great way to kind of demonstrate how we're going to divert water from going into our sewer lines and, and things like that. Because typically what it is, is drainage into our streets that end up get all combining with our sewers and going. So if we can show them that, no, we have rain barrels so we can use it for around the home um, or at least draining it into your yard and things like that, those are all demonstrations of that. Um, we also have a lot of great resources on our website for uh, education purposes for kids too. Um, so you could go there and, and um, do some lessons planning around that if you're really interested in doing that. Um, so it, with water, it, it's really trying to help people understand and educate. There's other issues re regarding our water. We've got some um, forever uh, chemicals that are being um, found in our waters, um, uh, PFAS, they call them. And, and those things are an incredible uh, uh, problem for us as we're not sure of all the health problems they can create, but it, we're finding it in our bloodstreams and things like that and we need to find a way to make sure manufacturers are avoiding the production of those things because they're really at the uh, molecule level, so it's, it's not something you can really filter out uh, completely. So um, you can improve on it. There are filters out there, but um, it's still an issue that we have to deal with, so you have to be careful of that. Just kind of want to touch base on the success of the Buffalo River a little bit. Again, this was a decade, uh, almost two decade um, long effort um, to clean up coordinate. We're the only nonprofit out of all the areas of concerns, the, and that's a designation, federal designation on uh, rivers and, uh, and waterways that have been so contaminated that the, the Clean Water Act ha actually diverted funding to um, help um, clean these areas up. And we were the only nonprofit that would be able to lead that process. Um, I was talking to a gentleman today about how the DEC and uh, was, uh, um, he knows a gentleman that led their component of that effort. And, um, and those things are incredible uh, to understand that with this organization, it's all about partnerships. We don't do it all. It's always about talking to partners like DEC, EPA, um, municipalities, local communities, groups like this, because um, we all can have a part in the cleanup and, and how we can do that. And then also educate us so we don't make it worse, right? You know, it's, you know, being able, if you work for a company that produces stuff, you know, are you an advocate for them to try to be more green? You know, that's the thing. It's, businesses have a, a, a purpose, so I'm not going to sit there and badmouth businesses, but um, there's ways, there's possibly ways that they can mitigate the problem. I mentioned our blue ways. Um, you can go to our website and actually plan a trip to go up the, the Buffalo River, launch from one place in your kayak or canoe and, and work your way up. There's fishing access as well. Um, our Ohio Street um, uh, point of access is one of our Blue Way sites that is also ADA um, accessible for not only kayak lock, uh, launching but also for fishing and things like that. So um, don't eat the fish yet, though. We're not quite there yet. So. Um, but you certainly can enjoy the, the activity. Big part of what we do, and to, to, to your question, is, is about education and, and engagement. So we have um, our Young um, Environmental Leaders Program that we work with, and I'm walking away from the mic again. I'm getting the thing, sorry about that. Um, and uh, what we do is work with local schools in the city of Buffalo, uh, Niagara Falls and um, Niagara Wheatfield, um, partnering with those schools either in the during, during the school year or over the summer, um, educating individuals on um, environmental issues around water, um, getting those students to come in, get their hands dirty, and 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 understand the problems. And we're actually just starting an alumni. We've been doing this for several years. So now now we're having an alumni group. And if you read our newsletters, there's a lot of information on that um, about how some of them have moved into STEM activities um, and and work. So it's it's a great opportunity there. Oh, there it is. See, I preempted myself there. Okay. We also have river watch water quality monitoring. Um, so we ask volunteers to kind of keep an eye on their waterways near them. Um, they can either uh, just be observant, looking for HABs, um, which are uh, 
bacteria blooms that you have to address. Um, and so you're, you can be our eyes. Um, we have teams of uh, individuals that go around and test waterways on a regular basis so we can do comparisons so we can understand what's going on as well. We have a volunteer ambassadors program, educate you on what we do, and then be able to come out and do this, what I'm doing today, and probably a better job than I'm doing today. But um, we'll, you know, it's a great thing, tabling events, things like that. So, and you'll see us around. We've been um, uh, at a lot of activities in the area. And of course, probably what we're more known for is our water uh, way cleanups and uh, so we have our spring sweep which we bring in about 2,000 volunteers every year cleaning up 50 sites along um, different waterways in our region um, you could certainly be a volunteer for that on that given day but we also launched um, this past year what we call solo sweeps and that is an ability for an individual to get some materials from us to go out and just do it wherever they want to do it on their own in small groups families things like that and, um, and then document what you've collected. Um, the goal here is we have an app that we work with um, and you, that allow us to kind of track that data so we can report back and be able to hopefully address some of these things, the worst areas. Restore core. These are for the people that like getting their hands dirty, um, where we do plantings and, and, and things like that. We ask our volunteers to do that. Um, so if you're interested in doing that, we have that throughout the summer months um, of, at different sites. Some of them are sites that we're restoring. Some are ones that we restored years ago that need some a little maintenance. All right, so yes, I am the fundraiser, so this slide has to go in. Right, um, just really quick. Um, we only can do what we do through the support of philanthropy. Um, for every dollar that we raise, we leverage it with, to receive federal, lo local, and state grants to deliver over 60 projects and programs every year. And it's those projects and programs every year that get the job done so we can see an improvement. So in the case of the Buffalo River, it's estimated another four times in economic investment on top of that philanthropic investment in grants um, was secured through um, economic development, river works, the housing down along the river, um, the activities of kayaking and things like that down there, all couldn't happen until the river got cleaned up. Um, so that's why this is important. It's a 40 to one return on philanthropy. So it doesn't take a lot. You know, a few dollars, a few dollars a month, if you have the means to do even more, it really will make an impact on our community. I'm going to leave it at that. So you can get involved. You can come um, sign up for our newsletter. I encourage you to do that first um, and learn more about us. Visit our website. It is massive. <laughs> um, so it might take you a while to get through it all, but it, it is, has a lot of great information um, that might inspire you to do um, some other things, such as volunteering and, um, and being part of the organization. All right, I haven't been keeping track of time, so I'm hoping I didn't take people too long. Um, questions? Yeah. <laughs> 